Number 22. A punter drops a ball from rest vertically one meter down onto his foot. The ball leaves the foot with a speed of 18 meters per second at an angle of 55 degrees above the horizontal. What is the impulse delivered by the foot? Magnitude and direction. All right, so here's a little drawing. Uh, the ball is coming down on the person's foot here, okay? And the foot uh, is then going to kick the ball, right? And the ball, it told us in the problem, is going to be traveling with a speed of 18 meters per second, and it's at 55 degrees above the horizontal. They want us to find the impulse delivered by the foot. Now, where is the foot making contact with the ball in my picture? It's making contact with the ball right here, right, right here. So I need to find the impulse at this point, okay? Now, if I need to find the impulse at that point, first question is, well, what is impulse, right? Well, impulse is simply the change in momentum. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call impulse in this problem J, all right? Why? I don't know. They do it in some books. It makes sense to call it I, but sometimes, well, I is the moment of inertia, so I guess that's why they don't do it. But anyway, uh, J will be impulse. And here we note that the impulse is simply the change in the momentum, okay? Now to find impulse, remember I can, you know, break this down a little bit to call it the final impulse minus the initial impulse, right? And then I can further break this up and realize that each um, momentum, right, is consistent of or consists of the mass multiplied by the velocity of the object. So I can say this would be the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. Noticing that they both have a common m, I'm going to factor that out. Okay, so I get it down to this equation. So, to find impulse, I need to know the mass, right? And now they didn't tell me mass in this problem. Maybe it'll cancel, maybe it won't, uh, but we'll see. If it doesn't cancel, then we're going to have to leave the answer in terms of m, all right? And uh, we notice it's also a function of the final velocity uh, minus the initial velocity. So remember, we're finding the impulse at this point, right? Right here where the foot makes contact with the ball. So what do I need to know about this point? I need to know these three things, final velocity and initial velocity. So if this is my frame of the problem right here, what's the initial velocity? Well, the initial velocity, if my frame is right here, it would be the final velocity of the ball coming down, right? Or traveling one meter with gravity, right? That should make sense. What's the velocity as soon as the guy, as soon as the punter hits the ball, what's the velocity of the ball? I mean, uh, it's going to be equal to the velocity of uh, the free fall of one meter. All right. So let's first detail that. So I know that the, for momentum, okay. So for, let me write it, let me, let me write this. So for the momentum problem, okay? The final velocity, excuse me, the initial velocity I'm going to find is when the ball just strikes the foot. So in order to find that, okay, my new frame becomes, here's the initial point, and here's now my final point, okay? So the new frame is this is the initial, and this is now my final point. Remember, initial and final are just relative, so I know that's the, probably the most confusing part about physics, okay? Uh, basically, what's happening in this problem is at this particular point, I am first calling it the final velocity here to find it, and then that final velocity becomes the initial velocity of my momentum problem, okay? So, let me just call that final velocity. So now, what do I know about that particular frame? If this is the initial point and this is the final point, well... I know that it starts at rest, they told me, so it starts at zero. I don't know the final velocity, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, I know it's basically in free fall, so I know the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity of 9.880, right, or 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And I also know the displacement, right? It's traveling one meter and it's heading down, so therefore it's traveling negative one uh, meters. Okay, so think of a formula that relates these variables to one another from kinematics. What do you think? Do you think of this one? The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus, oops, plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. That would be the one. All right.
Now, instead of um, solving it yet, all I'm going to do, meaning plugging in the numbers and whatnot, all I'm going to do is just solve this equation for the uh, final velocity here. Okay. Now, realize, though, we could get the number right off the bat. Right? I can plug in my acceleration and the displacement, and I can get it. Okay. But I'm just going to plug in everything at the end. So remember, in order to solve for this, we'd have to take the square root of both sides. Okay. So when we take the square root of the left-hand side, we get rid of the square. And now it would simply be, remember, that the initial velocity is zero, so I'm going to plug that in just to simplify it a little bit right now. Right? But this would essentially be square root, let me move it over a little bit, square root of two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. Okay, now, remember, anytime you take the square root of a number here, you get plus and minus. But my question to you is, what sign should it be? Because that'll probably be important. What sign do you think it should be? Well... What direction is it traveling in this frame? It's traveling down. So the final velocity here, once it hits the foot, it's actually negative, right? So that should hopefully make sense. Okay, so I'm going to leave this as a negative sign in there. Okay. Now what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call this the final velocity in the kinematic frame. All right, just the initial frame here, and that's the final. Now remember, that I, told, I mentioned it before, that that's, this will now also be equal to, let me change the color, this will also be equal to the initial velocity for my momentum problem or for my momentum frame, right? Remember the momentum, I'm trying to find the impulse here at this point. So the initial velocity is the ball coming down and this then will be the final velocity, okay? So now um, that equals the initial velocity for my momentum frame and it's the same thing. It's still gonna equal negative square root of two a y. Okay, so this is really what I need, okay? Now this value is the val. Well, let me not plug it in yet. You'll see why in a second. But essentially, it's this. Get it, you know, it's the final velocity. Excuse me, it's the initial velocity there. Okay. Now, as I just mentioned, so we found this piece. Okay. Now we need to focus on finding the final velocity. Remember, here's the point of the impulse. Okay. So this vector right here represents now the final velocity vector. Okay. And what do we notice about that final velocity vector, ladies and gentlemen? It is in two dimensions, right? It is both in the X and the Y. Don't we love that? So guess what we have to do now? We have to break it up into its components, all right? We gotta find the components of it. So how do we do that? Well, uh, I'm gonna draw a little coordinate system up at the top, okay? Let me draw in that vector. There's the 18 meter per second velocity vector. Okay, here's the angle of 55. And let's call this now the X component. Now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start calling this, right? Uh, really, this is the final velocity, right? Uh, for the momentum frame. So now this is going to be the final velocity in the X direction, okay? And then this component up here will be the final velocity in the y uh, direction, okay? So how do we find this component? Well, remember it's a triangle, okay? Remember about your triangles, you gotta be consistent. If you're talking about the, a velocity as your hypotenuse, then these also will be velocities, okay? I see that happen sometimes where, like let's say this is a velocity and all of a sudden, students might start solving for like distances here and here, you know, given the triangle, mm -mm -mm. got to be consistent. All right. So um, how, what formula can we create here? Well, we realize that we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and we're looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, that's cosine, right? So let's do now cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And we just said that the cosine of 55, give it a little space here, cosine of 55, should equal the VFX over the hypotenuse of, let me just leave it as the VF, okay? Um, and now all I need to simply do is just cross multiply, right? So we find that the final velocity in the X uh, direction is gonna simply be the final velocity resultant vector multiplied by the cosine of 55. Okay, so this is one. Now let's do the same analysis for the final in the y. So realize hypotenuse, angle, opposite side, so now it's sine, right? 
So sine of theta will equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine then of 55 will equal the final velocity in the y direction. Make that a little neater. Final velocity in the y direction all over the final velocity resultant vector. Again, let's just cross multiply. All right, so we're going to get, excuse me, so we're going to get the final, final velocity in the y frame now will be equal to final velocity resultant vector multiplied by the sine of 55. Isn't this enjoyable, ladies and gentlemen? I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. So now we found both, okay? We found both components. All right. So now you might be saying, well, wait a minute. How, how do I now, sub what do I do, right? I need to subtract. Okay, great. I got the final velocity, but I got this and this number. You know, what the heck do I plug into here now? I know this one should just go here. Well, remember, whenever we start dealing with components, okay, remember that component table we developed in kinematics, all right? It's a very handy dandy component table. So uh, let's create it, okay? So I have my X component, and I'll just do this in a different color. So I have my X component, I have my Y component, okay? I should say components. And what I'm gonna do here is we'll create a little table, okay? All right, so let's look at the math that we need to perform. It says that we gotta take the final velocity vector and subtract it from the initial velocity vector. Okay, so we have to take the final velocity vector and subtract the initial velocity vector. Now, for the purposes right here, just disregard this negative sign for right now. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do is just write in the initial velocity vector. I know I need to list the components of all uh, two of those vectors, okay? So what was the, probably should have made the table a little larger, but what was the X component of the final velocity vector? We found that over here, right guys? So that value is gonna simply be the final velocity resultant vector multiplied by the cosine of 55, okay? How about then the y component of the final velocity? Well, we just solved that over here, right? So that's the final velocity resultant vector multiplied by the sine of 55. Okay, now just plug in the values for the initial velocity vector. Now remember that initial velocity vector was pointing down, right? Go back to the picture over here, guys. It was pointing down, right? Down, down, down. So it had a y component to it, Right, this is the value we found. This is really a pure y value. Okay, so this baby gets plugged in for the y. So negative square root of 2ay. And what's the x component? Go back to the picture over here. What's the x component if it was pointing straight down? Zero, right? Okay, so plug in the value of zero. Now, we have all the components in the table. Now what I want you to do is think about putting in that subtraction sign. Why? Because now once I place in the subtraction sign, guess what I have to do to all the signs that were preceding the values? I have to change them, okay? Now obviously this is zero, so who cares? But now this sign I have to change to a positive value, okay? Because you're subtracting a negative, right? And that turns into become positive. So that should hopefully make sense there. So now all I need to do is add these two together. Right, add up all the X's and add up all the Y's. So now this is cool, right? So now the, I'll say the resultant vectors components now, right? The resultant velocity vector, okay? Should be now, um, actually I put a VF, I just meant resultant velocity there. Um, should now have the final velocity resultant vector multiplied by the cosine of 55. Now add these two together, okay? So all we need to do now is simply just, just write it down. So the final velocity times the sine of 55 plus the square root of 2ay. So here's the x component, here's the y component. All right, so far so good. Now, where do we go from here, right? I know it's a lot, all right, but it's not terrible, it's just a lot of steps. So now you have the resultant coordinates, okay? Now, basically what we need to do is find the value. So how do we find the overall resultant vector? Well, remember, we can simply plot this now, right? Now, just, just 
call this value simply the sum of all the x's, which that is, right? And call this particular value the sum of all the y's, okay? Now when I go in onto my um, coordinate system over here, all right, I'm gonna start plugging in the values. Now notice this is positive, right? So therefore I know my x component is gonna be positive. I'll just say that's the sum of the x. Okay, let me actually change this color a little bit, sum of the x, okay? And now let's take a look at then the y value. So now the sum of all the y's, it's also going to be positive if you notice. So therefore now just bring it straight up, okay? So this is the sum of all the y's. And where's your resulting gonna be? Remember, it's always from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector. And there it is, okay? So this is now the resultant vector. So how do you find that? Well, look, Pythagorean's theorem, right? You can use Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, so take this, square it, and add it to this, square it, and then take the square root. Okay, or you can remember the, this formula that the resultant vector is gonna be equal to the square root of the sum of all the x values squared uh, plus the sum of all the y values squared, right? So this now is, if you think about now going just one second, if you think about what this, what's the value in here, okay, the value simply is this resultant vector, right? Because remember, what did I do in the table? I took the final velocity vector and subtracted the initial velocity vector. So these are the components that I found over here. These are the components of that resultant vector. They are the components of this thing, okay? So when I find, when I find the resultant of these components, that is this, okay? So maybe what I'll do here, just to make it a little clearer, I'll write now that the impulse is equal to the mass multiplied now by this resultant vector, okay? And that's all we gotta do now. So all we gotta do is simply solve this thing, okay? Now, um, let me see, actually, let me move this up a little bit, okay? Let me just move this over to here, give myself a little more room. So now let's start plugging stuff in. Okay, so here we have the resultant vector. Now this is gonna equal the square root. Now the sum of all the x values squared. Well, here's the x values, right? Maybe I should just change the color a little bit here. Here are the x values. So it says the final velocity resultant vector. Remember we called that up here on the left, 18. So this is 18 multiplied then by cosine of 55, and that's gonna be squared. Okay, plus now the sum of all the y's, and then you square that. So what, what's the y component here? It's this whole thing, right? So start plugging in the numbers. So the final velocity here, right, was 18 again, times the sine then of 55, plus the square root of two times, I'm gonna run out of space, 9.8, times the y, right, the displacement over here in this problem right down here on the bottom left, guys, negative one. Okay, and I now have to just extend this on over. There it is, that, all you gotta do now is, well, whoops, 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 whoops. Jump too quickly there, right? Don't forget the parentheses around this and square it. Okay, square that. Okay, so now we can just throw it on into the calculator. Okay, so let's do that. Man, this one's a doozy, right? So square root, I sound like my grandmother. Uh, so square root of parenthesis 18 times cosine of 55 squared plus parenthesis 18 times sine 55 plus square root of two times, now careful with the sine, I realized, as I'm looking back at the work here, uh, the 9.8 is negative, okay? So you gotta have that in there, otherwise you're gonna have a negative under the um, uh, square root and it's gonna turn out to be invalid, all right? And I, I, plug, I had the negative sign over here, look on the left-hand side, guys, all right? So just copy, just plug that in wrong, but uh, we caught it, so not a big deal. So two times negative 9.8 times then negative one, okay? and then close the parentheses and square it. And there it is. Get about 21.775111114.
and we'll just round it, okay? Two sig figs, so we'll round that thing to now 22, 22, okay? And that is now meters per second, okay? That's the resultant, not the answer yet. We're basically there though. Oops, that's the resultant vector, okay? Now just go back to my formula over here, right? Now it's simply just the impulse is the mass multiplied by the resultant um, velocity. So now plugging it all back in, I'm gonna just take this formula actually, bring it up to the right hand side up here, and then just start plugging it in. So impulse is equal to the mass multiplied by that resultant velocity of 22. So obviously here we just get 22 m. And I know it doesn't feel as satisfying as when you get a real number. I mean, it's a real number, but when you don't have a variable in your answer. But uh, notice the mass did not cancel in any particular way. So we would have to know the mass in order to solve this. And um, here we came up with now a nice little formula that just tells us, hey, whatever the mass of the object is, just multiply it by 22. We'll find the impulse. And that is the magnitude. And let's not forget, we have to also find the direction. Joy. So let's take a look at the graph over here. So the basically all I'm doing right is looking for the angle, all right, in the triangle over here. So how do we find that angle? Well, we find that angle by taking the, I mean, we could do it a couple of ways, but let's do it by taking the tangent, right? Uh, we'll take the opposite side and divide it by the adjacent side. So I don't have much room here. I'm going to try to put it right here in the middle. But uh, we'll do tangent then of that angle will equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So basically we'll equal the sum of the y's, right? Sum of the y's, I'm going to have to erase a little bit over the sum of the x's, okay? Basically it's this value divided by this value, right? Because this is the y and this is the x, okay? So let's just get rid of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate this right now, all right? So actually, you know what? Let me just leave it as some of the y so you guys see it. Some of the y over some of the x. I just don't have room to plug it all into the formula. I think you understand this problem's a little crazy. And uh, I could erase, but I don't like to erase my beautiful work, right? So let's plug it all in. So we got the final velocity 18 times the sine of 55 plus then the square root of 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 1. And that's now going to be divided by uh, 18, make sure you got parentheses here, 18 times the cosine of uh, 55. And now remember, so that works out to be, so tan of theta now worked out to 1.856 or so, so about 1.86. And then take the inverse tan of both sides, so inverse tan that, and we get about 61.6. Or seven depends on where we round, but we should probably round to two sig figs. So looks like it's going to be 62. Okay, so this works out to be 62 degrees, and this is 62 degrees, you know, above the horizontal, right? It's going to be in the positive. Um, well, it's going to be in the first quadrant, right? It has both positive x and positive y. So you got two answers. The impulse is going to be 22 m at an angle of 62 degrees above the horizontal. All right, so yeah, why don't I just write it down, right? So J will equal 22M, 22M at 62, 62 uh, degrees above, above the positive X axis. Okay, and that takes care of that. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I know it was a long problem here, but thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it very much. And um, as you can see, right, the physics is cumulative, so you can't forget about all that kinematic stuff you did. All the vectors are really, really important that you have a good, solid, foundational understanding of that uh, because the impulse stuff and the new material is going to be hard enough, right? So you want to make sure you got um, definitely that those earlier chapters down pat. So thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. That would be great. I appreciate it so, so very much. It definitely helps us out tremendously. And um, I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.